You know, I think one of my favorite parts about filming the day that we released the podcast <laughs> What's that? is that you know I have to edit and then you're forced to do all the chores around the house because I can't. You have to go grocery shopping today. I have to go grocery shopping again. And if I remember correctly, I thought yesterday was supposed to be the day when I was out doing errands that you would be cleaning the house. But I don't think that happened. I did the kitchen. You did the kitchen? Yeah. And it got too late because oh. I went to the gym late when I came home and okay. I cooked. It was, I can't vacuum at nine. Because <laughs> It'd be disrespectful yeah, to the neighbors. That's rude. That's rude. What's the cutoff time? For, for vacuuming? Yeah. Um, 8.59. 8.59. Yep. So 9 p.m. rolls around. And I, I was about to turn it on. I go, oh, just turn 9. It's the cutoff. Well, now we know. I, I still think 9's a little late, actually. It's a little rude. I think anything past 8 is 8.30. Yeah. That feels respectful. Yeah. Hey, you want to hear something crazy? Huh. This is going to blow your mind. So 10 years ago... Think about how long ago 10 years was, right? Yeah. A whole decade. A lot happened. <laughs> you can say that again. Um, but you know, I live for these time hop apps and seeing, you know, where you were on this day five, day, five years ago or what was happening 10 years ago. Do you want to die at what I had put as my Facebook status 10 years ago? Now, this so in is 2012. 2012, February 9th, 2012. I was talking about you. You were my boyfriend at the time. So weird to even say that. Like, this is yeah. my boyfriend, Freddie. Because you, yeah. you're my husband now. But <laughs> I feel like I put all of this just stress around me reading this to you. And now it just, it's just, it's going to fall flat. It's not that great. But it makes me laugh. Well, if you give it your all, uh huh, the effort will transcend. <laughs> okay. All right, let's start. My boyfriend taught me how to cook eggs tonight. Progress, people. Progress. So that being said, what would you say my cooking skills are 10 years later? Was I making progress? Or you was were I, not. I was indeed you not making not. progress. <laughs> yeah, you were not making any progress. That was actually a false Facebook post. <laughs> It didn't age well. It did not age well. In a world where things people posted in the past aren't aging well, thank God ours is just cooking eggs. Right, right. Um, but yeah, you never became a, a good cook. What do you think's the best thing I could cook? I mean, nothing. And that's okay. <laughs> We're at, you're at a point that if you don't find it interesting and you don't want to put the time into it, just write it off. Just it's just not it your off. thing. You know, I went to my mom's last night. One of my favorite things about living close to my parents is my mom is a cook. You know, she's so excellent. And I went for uh, some Taco Tuesdays. Or taco Taco Tuesday. Yeah. And even the way that she makes tacos, it's just filled with these fresh ingredients and her knowing just the exact amount of time and how to make it taste so good. And I always have looked at her going... How do you know all that? But it's just experience and doing it and doing it. And I never did. It's because you don't like it. That's true. There's so many things you're amazing at. Oh, thanks, babe. Because you actually care to get good at it. Just not cooking. It's just something like <laughs> cooking has just been pumped into society that maybe like, you know, women should know how to cook kind of thing. Oh, and so is I that think right? you're kind of just like, oh, I should be a cook. I should be good at cooking. It's what everyone says. And like my mom cooked, my grandma cooked. Like it's kind of a thing. Yeah. Even like the women in my family. Well, my mom didn't cook. And we're an That's Italian true. family. That's true. An Italian mother who doesn't cook. How about your aunt? Aunts, do they? Are they? My aunts. Yeah, they, they cook. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Does Cherie cook? Your cousin? Uh, I think they cook, but I don't think they do elaborate like Big Italian things. meals like my grandma does. Like, both oh. my grandmas made meals. Like, so much food that you're like, what What can I... Like, no one could ever consume all this, but it's just like an Italian thing. Right. So we always grew up with just food. Oh, Tons always. and tons of food, like, on the table. You never had room to eat because there's just always so much food everywhere. But yeah, I think that's what, that's what we're learning as we're getting older, especially with when we're trying to figure out where to spend our time. Yeah. We're at the age now where we've tried enough things, and it doesn't mean we won't find something new in the future we love, but... We're at this age where I just want to focus all my time and energy on the things I enjoy doing. 
And so what's that for you? Like I love podcasting. I love acting, making content. I love doing marketing and advertising and building businesses. And I finally have become obsessed with working out and doing things like that, like working on health and fitness. And I just want to be a pro at all that. Everything else, you know, even with golf, oh, I've yeah. decided that I'm glad I have played enough that when my dad comes visit or friends come out and visit or play with your dad, I can go and have a good game of golf. Right. Whether I'm good or not, I'm not terrible where I would make it unfun. But at this point in my life, I don't see the value in investing 10 hours a week to mm-hmm. become great at this sport. Because if I go play with my dad next month, and I shoot 115, which is terrible, or I shoot a 78, like who cares? (laughs) Like the amount of time, effort, money, energy that I would have to put into golf to shoot incredibly well and be a great golfer, I don't see the value exchange. Because what the true value is, is being outside, spending time with people you love, playing a sport, challenging yourself to get better, but I just I don't care to put in so much time to become an, an expert at golf. Right. And I've I, but I would have never done that when I was younger because I was in my twenties and I was interested in trying everything. Yeah. But now I will only put time and effort into things that I truly love the process of doing. I would like the end result of everything. Right. But what will what process will you enjoy? I would love to be the the most badass boxer in the world the result of that who wouldn't want to be able to walk the streets and go no one could ever touch me the result sounds amazing but would i for the next 10 years wake up at 4 30 in the morning and train for three hours will i like that process for 10 years to be the best boxer in oh, the you'd world hate that <laughs> so if i don't want to enjoy the process but i enjoy the process of podcasting yeah. I enjoy the process of creating advertisements. I enjoy the process of making videos. Yeah. I enjoy the process of acting of itself, not the process of getting that job. Right. But now there's new acting, like booking jobs and doing acting and scripts for brands. Mm-hmm. I get to act from home, and that's pretty cool. So I think boiling it all back to your cooking thing, just gradually get better like I am at golf, where if you ever do have to cook a meal, you can, but you don't have to have the best chicken parmesan. Yeah, but you know me. I don't like doing things unless I give it my all. It's two different things. It is two different things. But the thing with you, you're actually a really great cook. And Hmm. you're pretty good. I mean, not like elaborate in any way. Not elaborate, but to me. I make edible food. Like you without instructions would burn and destroy food. Like I could take all ingredients and make something edible. Right. Not the best tasting. Right. So I know enough of that. But... Anyway, I think, well, let me let me do our opening eight oh, minutes ooh. in. Um, welcome, everyone, to the Freddie and Alyssa Show. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, like, comment, all that fun YouTube stuff. If you're listening on Facebook, like the page. And if you're listening on a platform like iTunes, you want to leave us a five-star review because you think we deserve it, that would be amazing. We've been putting up content now for almost four years or over four years at this point. And we can't thank you enough for your ongoing support. We couldn't be doing what we love without all of you. So thank you. Now, back to the one thing you did say about me being your boyfriend yeah. back in the day. Yeah. Um, what do you, I, I was thinking about this the other day. What do you think has changed if you had to dissect what love, what, when you loved me in one year, when you loved me in three years, when you loved me in six years, when you loved me here 11 years later, it's called love. But don't you feel differently about me even though it's still universal love have you ever thought about what has changed hmm well it's it's the different levels of love so in your first year of any relationship it is that lust that oh my goodness i cannot wait to see this person i can't wait to touch this person where 10 years later a hug and a touch and a kiss from you is so much deeper you know what I mean? Because we're like really physical people. We're always yeah. hugging, touching, all of that. But it just 10 years of everything we've gone through together, the highest highs, the lowest lows, and just growing together as a couple and not allowing that to tear us apart, essentially. Every hug, every kiss, everything, you feel the years and the years and the years of that kind of love. Because even in year three, you know, we thought that, 
we knew each other and we did you know we because you and i are very unique we went from being best friends for a year and a half so we already knew each other to moving in the second we started dating and that wasn't our choice it just kind of happened and i thought i was going to move into another place and then we ended up working so well together that we're like oh let's just live together this this is great it works and three years in you know you still have that lust and that that new love i mean three years is still pretty early on i'd say you're starting to get accustomed to that person and a routine and a life and you're thinking hmm, we're at year three here you know is this going to be a forever thing right i think that's yeah. enough time um but i had read something really interesting years ago and it's funny because this was probably right when we first started dating and i don't know why i remembered this but I guess there is something chemically where after seven years, your body is not the same level of um, not attracted, but you you lose a certain chemical with a person. There's something like like not pheromones, but something on that level. Yes. And that's why they call it the seven year itch. If you heard of that before, where like people go and cheat, because I guess the seven year mark is when for whatever reason, your body, I wish I had the exact information. We could look it up. Yeah. But you lose that that chemical of what makes you as attracted to that person. And that is why having that deep-rooted love and respect and friendship keeps the relationship on fire, which I think for us is something we've done really well at because we love and appreciate each other as people so much. Yeah. Were you looking that up? I was looking it up for you here, but um, I got to keep digging into it to to find where we were on that. Um, your, but do you do you feel that it was really love? Do you think it was love in the first year? I think it was lust. I think we thought we were in love. I mean, it could be love. I don't know. Like, do you? Th- well, th- this is a good question. Is love something? Do you like? Do you believe in love at first sight? Because we're, we're basically trying to label a feeling. That's uh-huh. what that's what I was trying to dissect earlier, where I was just sitting around going, now that I know when I say I love you now, mm-hmm. did I really, did we really love each other in year one? Not that we, I mean, we loved each other, but the meaning of love has changed. Sure. And I, and I feel what, I feel, it's not that love has grown, it's that my respect for you mm-hmm. has grown. 100%. Because I think, I, think I, I, I think when people get together, they love each other. They fall in love, but you have to build respect and trust. But that's why a lot of relationships you'll see, especially as people get older, they are with someone for a year or two and they are just so madly in love and they're like, we have to get married. This is the next step. And then you'll see years into the relationship, things don't really work out because they reacted off of a, a feeling, a lust feeling. A, oh my God, this person's my everything. They didn't have the years of you know going through trials and tribulations and oh, this person leaves their shoes here. Oh my gosh, they don't clean up their dishes. How can I live and, and have that lifestyle with someone? All the little nuances start to bother them. But I, I, I think though that lust and puppy love, whatever we want to come yeah. up with this term, yeah. and I'm curious what you all think too. Like yeah. what's that I wonder if we see the shoes hmm. and you trip over the shoes, but you're on the way to the bedroom. Yep. And so you don't care about the shoes. Yep. But when you're coming home from work three years later and you're in a bad mood and you're not on your way to the bedroom and you trip over the shoes hmm. after you've told someone six times to not put their shoes there. Right. But the shoes were always there. That's interesting. So... It brings me back to the main question, but see, my respect, because I was trying, because there's, what is it? It's such a deep question that I was trying to ponder, and I think it's just respect. So I think that's what happens in a in a good relationship is that you have love and lust, but you have to build that foundational trust and respect like you do with your best friends. And a true friendship. Because you and I, that is something I feel so grateful for because I know most relationships aren't like this, but 
genuinely as a friend, I fucking love you. Like, I yeah. love hanging out with you. I love hearing your thoughts on things. I like doing stuff. I can't wait to call you and tell you stuff. And it's not just because of you're obviously my husband and the romance, which obviously is a big part of relationship, but just that friendship. Like, as a person, I love you. You're so fun to be around. You make me laugh. I can't wait to tell you different things or hear what you thought about yeah. X, Y, and Z. And it's really interesting because I'm a massively big hopeless romantic. I love romance. Give it to me. I've been like that since I was young. But when you said earlier, you know, love at first sight, that whole idea, as much as I want to believe in that because I'm a hopeless romantic, my brain goes, I don't think there's any way in heck that it could be love at first sight. It could be lust at first sight. It could be seeing that person and maybe just knowing deep in your soul, like, this is my person. I believe in that, but I just feel the term love at first sight. You're basing your entire feelings simply off of the way someone looks. And love is so much deeper than that. It is, but it depends on if it's just a, um, a photo of them then maybe it's like lust at first sight. But if you see someone for the first time and they're just like alone reading a book in the park or they're like doing like a goofy dance right. or they're doing something that is a reflection of like, wow, they're beautiful and look at how they're doing this funny little dance and like I do that. Hmm. And like maybe there's this like kismet type like, yeah. oh my gosh, like wow, I'm kind of feeling more than just butterflies because I feel like there's – like we have something in common. We're both we're both goofy. Huh. I love the way that she was reading, but like doing this with her feet. Or I'm making poor yeah, examples no, here, but, but I like it. It's something else. But maybe the question becomes then: how to how do you build trust and respect intentionally in the first couple years of a relationship? Then, a because question. you don't want to wait seven years, twelve years, fifteen years into a relationship for challenges or for respect to be built mm -hmm. because if somebody loses a parent like you're in a new relationship and if someone loses a parent or a loved one six months in you're going to learn a lot about that person mm -hmm. during one of the darkest times in their life yep. but if someone is lucky enough to meet someone and both of their lives are great for four years do you think there's anything people can do when they're newly in a relationship to enjoy that love and that lust that just comes naturally, but to maybe make proactive decisions on building trust and respect. Because I think just not cheating during guys' night is enough. I... It's kind of like, well, yeah. But but that's also the different thing about love too, is that it, I, that's my consensus. I, I don't want, I'm not going to get into it too much further in that this example I was going to give, but like, it's definitely the respect that has changed. Mm -hmm. Like, and here's an example of what I mean by respect. I have a lot of friends from being in LA who are in the industry, um, very beautiful, attractive mm -hmm. girls that are friends of mine. And if they post on social media something sexual, like lingerie or revealing yeah. or if it's like a bikini picture and it's just a normal picture with friends in a bikini though i support my friends and i like every one of their other pictures out of respect for our relationship and you i don't like those pictures of my girlfriends because when other people are scrolling through hmm. and it shows 1800 people like this and it shows that Freddie and two of their other friends have liked it. It's showing that Freddie likes this girl in this bikini, and it's disrespectful in my eyes to you. I agree. Now, not now. I'm, that's just my opinion. You're more than welcome to like whoever, like whatever people want to do. I'm not casting judgment. Right. But that is where I've gotten in our relationship where I won't like it. I appreciate it. I go, that's a badass photo. You sure. look good. We're we're not like weird jealous people like that. No. We can be like, damn, like, like she look looks good. great. He yeah. looks great. Like yeah. but publicly, I would never like it because subconsciously people are like, Oh yeah, Freddie's liking this bikini pic of this chick. And it's like <laughs> it's a disrespect no, no. thing. Won't and do it. 
do you remember at the very beginning of our relationship, and this is kind of interesting when you were mentioning what can people do to build that respect. We did this right off the bat. Right when we got together, we sat down and we said, okay, we have this list of people. You aren't going to hang out with X, Y, and Z, and I'm not going to hang out any longer with this person or this person because they might have been people that maybe were interested at us in one point or like the interesting thing with LA, you have a lot of friends, but everyone there is kind of interesting, interested romantically in the other. Things happen. Everyone hooks up. I mean, that's just the culture and of every, LA. Everybody's got a wonderful personality. Some people of have course. some issues, but they're funny, uh, up front, outgoing, they're funny, charismatic, attractive. attractive. It's and a different world. Um, but yeah, go a little further on this, but I want to like Dive open that up a little, little bit, bit more because it's it's not like we were telling each other who we couldn't and couldn't be friends with no we just sat down as a new couple going look i would really appreciate it if you didn't go get lunch with this person or you know go hang out with them because at one point you guys had been making out and things almost happened we knew off the bat at what 22 years old we were we we're still very young but we knew that Bad things would happen if we put ourselves in those positions. I had guys that I knew that I go, I'm not going out with them because I know. I think I'm thinking of a couple examples. Yeah. I don't really want to say names, but, but you like can explain. for my, for me, is it was it like one of the like one of the older girls yes. in my acting yeah. class? Yeah. And then for you, as one of the older guys, we both had older people, like yeah. way older. That's so funny. Where it was kind of like, oh, because there was, yeah. Well, the guy that I'm thinking of for me. Um, I think I was 22. I think he was like nearing 40, actually. Yeah. Just a bit older. But right before we got together, I was hanging out. We got, I think it was like sushi. And he was telling me, and I'll never forget this. He goes, yeah, you know, it's it's crazy because, you know, we're here and we're, we're talking. We, we weren't like dating by any means, but we were hanging out. And he was like, you could go meet your husband tomorrow. And then that's it for me. He goes like, I'll never, yeah. you'll never see me again. And then lo and behold, not that I met you the next day, but uh, literally a week later we got together and I was like, he was right. But, but, but do you really, but I guess our examples weren't friends. They were somewhat romantic. Kind of almost like people we were just kind of talking with early stages of so maybe not even a relationship. It maybe wasn't. It, it was just people that we up. kind of just because yet again, people just were kind of hooking up. And That's the culture. Yeah. You would like hang out as friends for three days and do nothing. But then you'd be at a party and you'd make out with the person. Then you yep. wouldn't talk for three weeks and then they'd be around with someone else. It was just and what then, it was. So it was anybody who was, we were kind of, I guess you would call it dating. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. But we didn't draw a line in the sand because I'm still thinking of other people who are like, I'm in a new relationship right now and I'm watching like... You, you can't make people block people on social media. Like, that's no. where it gets crazy. Well, you don't want to be a psychopath. You also never, ever, ever want to be like, I need to see your phone. Show Like, no. If, if you're at that level, it's like maybe it's there's a reason there's a trust issue. Now, not to say you can't get there, because even you and I, we went through a lot in the beginning of our relationship. Like, it yeah. was crazy. It, it took the people we were then, though. We were just immature and naive enough to get through our issues yeah because at this point in our life i wouldn't <laughs> oh do it God. like none of this would be an issue if i got together with somebody and they were being sketchy at all i would say hey like this isn't cool and they would either change or i'd be out instantly yeah i would spend zero time if there was even a hint of anything weird yep you know what i mean but back then we were just so young figuring it out mm -hmm. especially in that world well it makes me question as well were we okay a we lived in la which whole different world on its own but we were also really young yet again everyone is young at one point in their life i think everyone kind of goes through those times of hey this is when i can make mistakes yeah you you live oh my gosh what was the tagline for the show friends i think it was the time in your life when your friends are your life family or friends are your family that's what it is so we live that. I'm sure every single person in your early 20s, there is a time where you live for, oh, after work, we're getting together. We're going to go do this. Yeah. Oh, what's everyone doing this weekend? And we had such a big group of friends that, you know, things happen, parties happen, different people connect. And it just, it's funny to look back and go, well, what was the last time that those friends ever got together? 
those friends ever partied. You know what I'm saying? In the sense Before of, everyone went and dated other people yeah. and went out with their own life, yeah. but everyone started it at happens. that nucleus and you... Yeah, it, it's a... Um, it's an interesting thing building a relationship and I, I feel like building a relationship and finding someone to share your life with takes up a lot of bandwidth and a lot of time for people mm-hmm. as they're trying to navigate this ever-changing world. Yep. So sometimes it's nice to think about how you know, we take it for granted because we've gone through it and we're in it yeah. that we don't really put effort into the relationship. It just works. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot that goes into it, but finding the right person makes, yeah, like I've never understood the saying, like, you know, well, marriage is hard work or relationships are hard work. I'm like, it hasn't felt like work at all to me. Likewise, baby. Like, I don't know what to work, like, what do you mean? Like, but there are people that need to go and talk about issues and figure that out. But I think maybe it's the individuals who have issues in their own life mm-hmm. and they need to work on themselves to grow past a point of pain or trauma or whatever's in their life or make a change and when they're at a better place and their partner's at a better place you work better together 100 percent. because if you're trying to if you're trying to rely on your spouse to make you happy to get you out of depression to give you purpose Mm -hmm. you're in a losing battle we've never relied on each other for happiness and purpose we've Mm -hmm. we've derived that from things external work building businesses, friends, family. We didn't require it from each other. We just kind of built lives that we loved and shared them with each other. And then it ended up combining because we ended up working together. Right. We didn't work together at first. No. First six years, we, you know, we didn't. But the last eight, how long have we been together? First four (laughs) years, we did it. But the past eight years, we've been working together. Today's sponsor is Truebill. How many free trial subscriptions end up costing you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars long after forgetting to cancel? Fight back against scammy subscriptions with Truebill. Truebill is the new app that helps you identify and stop paying for subscriptions you don't need, want, or simply forgot about. On average, people save up to $720 a year with Truebill. Because companies make subscriptions hard to cancel, Truebill makes it incredibly simple. Just link your accounts and Truebill will cancel your unwanted subscriptions in one tap. And your Truebill concierge is there when you need them to cancel unwanted subscriptions so you don't have to. We love Truebill. If you haven't downloaded the app, download it after this podcast. Check it out. It'll make your life incredibly simple. You can lower your bills and a low overhead gives you more freedom. We need to put that on a t-shirt. Truebill has over 2 million users and helped them save over $100 million. Like Matthew B., who says, In a matter of seconds, I saved $660 for the year on my DirecTV bill. I saved $120 for the year on my SiriusXM bill. And I saved $840 a year on car insurance. Don't fall for subscription scams. Start canceling today at Truebill.com slash Freddie and Alyssa. Go right now. Truebill.com slash Freddie and Alyssa. It could save you thousands a year. Truebill.com slash Freddie and Alyssa. Start saving today. Did you like the punch on that end there? Start (laughs) saving today and download the app. Now back to the show. That's what makes things work for us because we know how to communicate. First and foremost, when it comes to any issue at all that I could ever have with you, I I will sit down and I'll talk to you about it. But I feel like we're also at the point in our relationship, we know each other so well that we know things the other person isn't going to like. Or like there are just so many things I know about you and that I feel that I could just communicate just with a look. I know you're not going to like something. Yeah, I'm still convinced you're not real. (laughs) <laughs> that I'm going to like wake up one day and they're going to show me all these podcasts and it's an empty chair <laughs> because we're so on the same page. Yeah. And I'd say the only note for people who maybe are in a relationship too at our level in the sense of you're five years in, 10 years in, 20 years in, or if you're brand new and you want to know like, hey, is there any tips? The only tip that, that like, a, like, a, like a tactical tip is be quick to apologize. Mm-hmm. Because we'll have little bickerings and we resolve it within five minutes. 
Yes. We don't go to bed or prolong it for five hours and feel that heartbreak. No. We just go, hey, I messed up. I'm sorry. It's usually me apologizing. (laughs) Well, when you look back at it, you know, we're now in our 30s. And for a majority of most of our 20s, I mean, that was it. We were dating each other. So... Even when I look back at the other relationships I had before you, now granted, I was younger, you know, things can be different, but there was a lot of jealousy on both ends. And in my last relationship, the individual would always say to me, hey, you know, you're so-and-so's looking at you, or why, why is this person your friend? Like, why are you guys hanging out? And I never understood because he was just so jealous about it, but then he was the one who was cheating on me. So you look at all of these different signs of people not being compatible. You know, we just weren't compatible. We would fight. I mean, you had relationships too. We, we both were in some crazy relationships. Now, is that being young and immature and not understanding, yes. yet, right? Yeah, that's all it is. We were just young and immature. But I think people continue to carry that on in life as well, where either A, they're not compatible or they're just not communicating well. And you have to learn to communicate. That is the number one tip in the world of a solid relationship is communication people cannot read minds you don't know what they're going to do if there's something that's upsetting you and on your heart you need to have a a conversation and you both just throw it out there how do you feel well why do you feel that way you have to listen i mean even when it comes to arguing like i am not a screamer i'm not one of like that's just not who we are i can but 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 In a past relationship, I don't know if it was because I was young or not, but that person brought it out of me. And I'd freak out. Yeah. I don't do that anymore. Yeah, I I don't know. I'm I'm at a point where, you know, and I I obviously don't know anyone's individual relationship, so this isn't advice per se. But for me personally, you know, I'm, I'm I'm not at a point where I would ever sacrifice or over compromise to make a relationship work. Mm -hmm. Like we have like everyday compromises of like, oh, I don't want the living room this way or, you know, do the dishes more. Like those are compromises that make a relationship work. Hey, like this is happening. Like, hey, do you want to, like we make, we do things for each other in certain scenarios, but I don't compromise who I am. And I think that's where people set up for trouble too, is they start compromising who they are deep down. Somebody's like extremely eccentric or loud or outgoing and they suppress that to compromise and Hmm. make it work with their partner when it's like you shouldn't be with that person if you have to compromise who you are. Compromise on actions sometimes, that's where the compromise happens. I don't want to live in Champions Gate, you do. Well, I want to live in Reunion or you don't. Well, why don't we meet in the middle? That's a compromise. I'm not going to compromise any aspect of my personality, my ambitions, things that I like for the relationship. And I think that's what people have to focus on. The compromises should be external, but you shouldn't have to compromise who you are deep down. Now, if you like drink too much or you're angry or disrespectful, those are things that aren't a good characteristic to have. You should work on that yourself make the compromise and sacrifice for you yeah. because blowing up and being angry all the time is an inter- is a you issue mm-hmm. internal mm-hmm. Well, those are problems you have to fix people who say well that's just how i am i'm just this person if it's in and if it's in a rude way then that's a cop out yeah there there's a way to to not be taken advantage of there's a way to be assertive but there's also a way to do it and not be an asshole Right. So when people say, well, I'm just, that's just the way I am. It's like, well, you've just chosen that because you don't want to do the work because it sucks <laughs> to have to do personal work on yourself every day for years to learn to control your anger or mm-hmm. whatever it is that you do. And it's not easy. It's still challenging. We grow every day and it's challenging. It's so It's challenging. hard to be positive. There's certain times that I just want to go like, F you. Like to somebody on the, you know, like you, yeah. you, you like, like you are stupid. Like I want to go down to these people's level, but I realized to myself, you're not going to bring me there. Mm-hmm. You're not going to get a reaction out of me. 
I'm in control of my emotions. I'm in control of my behavior. Life is all about how you react to things. Mm -hmm. And the best example of this when you're dealing with like people who are truly injured, it's what it is. It's a, yeah. it's a story that I heard about a guy who was hunting with his dog. And he, would, he, he like shot a bird and he told his dog, he goes, go on, go get the bird. And the dog would just lay down. And he shot another bird. He goes, come on, go get the bird. And the dog would just lay down. Then he grabbed him by the collar. He's like, come on, go, go get the bird. And the dog wouldn't do it. And he was frustrated with his dog. He goes, you're not a hunting dog. You're just, you're just a stupid dog. You're terrible. And he, he opens up the back of his truck. And he picks his dog up to bring him home. And he realizes when he pulls his hand away that the dog's bleeding. And he looked under the dog and his stomach was cut. And he instantly, his frustration with the dog turned into sympathy because the dog is injured. And that's how some of these bullies are. That's how some of these people who are in bad situations that are talking crap or being angry or causing problems in life, we get frustrated that they're not acting how we would want them to act, hmm. but they're injured. They just lost a loved one. They got fired. They're in a relationship they hate. They, they've gained a lot of weight. They're being treated like crap at their job. And they don't want to be unhappy, mm -hmm. but they've been unhappy for so long and they're emotionally injured. So as soon as you start thinking for somebody to leave a negative comment or to say something to your face that's so inappropriate in real life mm -hmm. or to just be rude, you're like, oh, they're, they're, they're injured. injured. They're going through something. I'm yeah. not frustrated. They just, they just don't get it yet. They're not at that level yet. As they, they haven't say, put in the work yet. Hurt people hurt people. Yeah. And that's all it is. That's a really unique point of view and story. You, you have to have empathy for people. And then when you start getting good at it, it almost is kind of even more challenging because I'm so aware of other people's feelings that it's hard for me to say no and create boundaries mm -hmm. because I know that I was like, I don't want this person to like be hurt. Of course. But I also have to control my space, my time, my boundaries. And I'm constantly thinking of ways to handle conflict because getting angry and blowing up, the only time you should ever use anger and blow up is when your adrenaline needs to pump in a life-saving situation. Mm -hmm. There's no other scenario unless your life's in danger where you need that adrenaline pump to go after someone and scare a group of people to stay away from you or to fight. Hmm. It's like in everyday life, I'm not going to allow you to control my emotions and get me angry. Sadhguru said that. Yeah. My emotions are my business. If other people can affect the way you feel, that's true slavery. Oof. You're going to be a slave to the randomness of random people, especially these days on the internet, that they can say something and they can touch your in t inside emotions. Your mm. body and your emotions are completely up to you. You're in control of how you feel. You can choose happiness. You can choose being grateful. You can true choose to feel that anger and shift your mindset and dissipate the anger mm -hmm. and not allow people to get a reaction out of you. And that's a full-time job. On a but scale of one to 10, how good do you think you are at that? I don't think you'll ever perfect it. I was a zero a lot of my life, uh -huh. maybe like a three. <laughs> Because I'm still affected in certain situations, but a lot of the time I'm not. Because of the way that I handled it. And I think because we get so much practice, because we've been around so many people, and we've been in sales, and we've dealt with rejection, and we've dealt with rude people. And now with the internet, even though most of our comments are positive, you still get negative comments. But that repetition, you start to go, there's just so many that you, you kind of just, you can't care. Right. You know, there's certain times in my life when things are going so well and something kind of happens where I go, oh, I feel bad. I feel bad. Like, uh, and then it bothers me. Yeah. Something small. Yeah. But if my life is so busy and there's so many things, they all become irrelevant, which shows me I'm being over empathetic. Hmm. Where I'm like, oh, you just didn't have anything that was wrong in life and you're creating a problem. You were right to think, to do, to say no or you were right to do this, or you were right to do that. You were just so happy, and you just didn't want to hurt somebody. So sometimes I get over-empathetic. If you're getting a negative comment on 
social media, what's the way that you react to that? Do you react? Do you write them back? Do you block them? Do you ignore? What's in your um, point of view the best I way? I 100% ignore it. Yeah. I don't really see all comments either. But every now yeah. and then if I'm checking something, you'll you'll see a lot of positives or you'll see a negative comment. If it's like real nasty where there's like some real deep-seated it's when it's a personal. Now I just realized this. If someone, like I made a post the other day about Florida and there were a handful of comments of people like, Florida's terrible. And like, why the hell would anyone go to Florida? And Texas and Florida is terrible. And just like, enjoy, like, flo- like just very negative. And you felt the, the ignorance of it, hmm. but it wasn't directed at me. So I was aware of like, well, there's nothing I can ever, like, what am I going to say? I'm not going to have a conversation with someone who has written off an entire state because of your political views. Right. Like F Disney World and no state tax and beautiful weather and beaches and opportunity and the economy and all these beautiful Airbnbs for vacation with your family and memories. Write all that off because of your political assumptions of the whole entire state. That's not rational. So saying anything, no one's ever going to say something that ridiculous. And then I comment back and go, well, what about all this nice stuff? No, there, there's that, that there is no, that is a waste of time and energy. But if somebody says something negative, like for instance, on TikTok, I've a few people when they see my videos, because I'm doing pretty well over there. So I get a lot of views. And I'll see people who say, like, you need braces, you need braces because my bottom teeth. And I go, that's stupid to say. Mm -hmm. I would never tell that to somebody. Mm -hmm. But I'm not insecure about my teeth. Right. My bottom teeth. So I don't care. So something like that. It really doesn't bother you. Yeah. um, But if somebody's writing negative comments that are a personal attack, trying to be hurtful on purpose, Mm -hmm. then I block those people. Right. You, and you can tell the difference. Like they're literally personally attacking you. Like saying you you should get braces is just more of their insecurities being projected. Right. But they're not attacking. They're just putting that out there to try to feel better. But then there's people who personally attack and those are the ones I block. But I would never debate with a bully because then I go down to their level. And the sad part is that I would destroy them intellectually. Yeah. So it's unfair. Like imagine I'm in a Starbucks line and a five-year-old kid kicks me in the the shin and goes you're stupid old man and i started punching this kid in the face everyone in that starbucks not only is it illegal would go there's something wrong with that man he is five Mm -hmm. what you can't do that that's how i feel intellectually with these trolls it's unfair for me to obliterate them intellectually with the comment and then i become the bully punishing this person who's already injured yeah and i am not that guy i am not going to punish you just because i can that's what makes you a man that's what makes you a woman that's what makes you a strong person when you have the power to hurt someone when you have the power to physically or emotionally hurt someone and they anger you but you choose to not do it Hmm. but can you think if everyone had that mindset what our world would be well, and what, it, what is that, though? Is that us not learning when we're young? Do yes. schools need to have yep. personal development, yep. emotional intelligence? Yep. And they don't. The whole entire world could be fixed in 20 years if everybody focused every piece of their energy on what they could individually control, making their lives better, one small step at a time. And if you want to point to the government or big companies or higher powers— Don't have them solve anything. Every ounce, every resource, everything should go in to education. Educate people to a level where they can make decisions. And the more decisions they can make and the more education they have, the more opportunities Mm -hmm. will be for them. People who are just thrown in this world with no education don't know where to find an opportunity and don't know how to take an opportunity if they're not educated. Like the fact that people will write somebody off based on their who they voted for 
is strange to me. Yeah. Like that doesn't make sense to me. You know what I mean? Unless the person's acting in a way that you don't agree with. Like sure. if there's someone I sit down with and they're like, yeah, I voted this way. And I think that everyone should just, you know, and they start getting, I'd be like, I get it. I'm not taking it out on the political group. That's a personal decision right. that this person needs to grow. But I feel society generalizes like, oh, you vote for this person. You must be everything that I've ever seen on the news or heard about this party. Yeah. What have you. They don't understand that everyone is just a person. You might take some ideals from that party. You might take some ideals here. You might be independent, whatever it is. Yeah. But not everyone is like black or white, 100% left No, it's just right. the extremes, yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, maybe that's just something that people hold on to or they connect with or they're passionate about. And so they're going to make those decisions. I mean, for me personally, I love hearing every side of every story. Like, literally one of my favorite things because you, you're learning you're seeing why people feel that way you can be empathetic or try and understand well now i understand even though it might not make sense to me why you with your history would feel that way and make that decision or whatever yeah. it is because we're we because we've chose to learn mm -hmm. a lot of people will, will will stand on a hill and will die on that hill because they have decided that they know everything about everything right where you and i don't stand on any hill. Mm -hmm. I'm not even saying politically. I'm saying in life. I want to just learn. I'm more than happy to change my opinion at any time. Mm -hmm. If I get enough resources and information, I'd be more than happy to go, oh, wow, I actually thought this for so long. Now that I've gotten this information and these are the facts, I'm, I'm switching my mind. Mm -hmm. Because we've chosen education. We're open to learn because that's why I think we're here. And I just wish that people would focus a little bit more if you want to look at the news or you want to look at the government on just education. If I was ever going to run for something, I would run on education mm -hmm. because that's what you need to give people. Give people the tools and then it's up to the individual. Hmm. But you, you have to give everybody the tools. Yeah. Some people aren't getting the tools, yeah. so it's unfair. You have to give everyone the tools and then everyone's responsible for their own life but you have to give everyone the tools. So then if there's someone who's listening now and they go, hey, um, I'm interested in getting some of these tools or doing something to better myself, um, open my mind, what would your advice be on that? Do you have any tips, I books mean, it's, to read, it's just such a, it's such to? a, It's such a lifestyle change. It's, it's kind of like losing weight. It's, it's kind of like, you know, the first simplest step is just recognizing that you have control over your life. Yeah. That if you look around and there's even one person that is like you, no matter what that means, and they've been successful, whatever success means to you. If you yeah. look at someone that's like you and they have a family or a job or whatever you value, and you've seen that someone like you from a small town or from a certain background or from wherever, you've seen them succeed then you can succeed. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're in a position right now where you're listening to a podcast. Mm -hmm. This isn't, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm aware of like, if you have the means to be on a computer or a phone listening to a podcast, right. then I believe you're in a position that you can change your life if you're unhappy. Yeah. I'm not talking about truly people dealt, like hands that wouldn't eat, that they're just thinking about lunch today how am i going to eat yeah. there's a different advice for that but if you're sitting around right now at the gym at your job at home hearing this yeah you're in a position in this country at least to take a step forward to clean your room to clean out your car to fold your clothes to read a book to slowly pull away from one negative friend but every time you're with them you leave worse than better Mm -hmm. slowly pull away find more podcasts to listen to find some good books to read to put yeah. positivity in your mind but that's the biggest thing is that the whole narrative is that people need to come and save you mm -hmm. that someone else is going to help you no they're not yeah no they're not 
you have to help yourself. So that's the one piece of advice. Just know that blaming, complaining will get you nowhere. Playing the victim will get you nowhere, even if you are. Complaining about it will not help you. You know, maybe next week we could do a small segment on some of our favorite books and leaders. Yeah, and just based off of different topics of obviously there's so many things that can go on in life and so many areas we all want to better ourselves in. Yeah. But just to kind of do a deep dive into that, I think that would be really helpful because that's that's been a lot of our growth journey, right? We've been really, really, um, you know, careful about what we fuel our minds with. Yes. Because it helps you to think a different way and have a more positive, better mindset to yep. be an incredible individual in the world. Yeah. That's all we want to do is leave this place better than we found it, right? If you can't even control your reactions to a stranger on the street and you're flipping them off, that's not we're not doing a good job there. But we've all been there. Don't get me wrong. Well, and that's the balance of where I'm trying to find my place in the world. You know, we, we kind of got into some stuff this last 10 minutes here. There's a lot more of this in us. Mm-hmm. And I'm just trying to find a way to share inspiration and things that we've overcome in our life mm-hmm. to inspire people, if they're not happy, to grow. Bingo. Someone who's completely happy in life, the, the advice isn't for you. Mm-hmm. You're like, I get it, you know? But at the same time, I'm happy but I still seek advice because I want to keep growing. Yes. And I heard someone mention this before. I forget who it was. Um, If we could snap our fingers, allocate all the time and attention and money to educating and helping everybody become educated, heal their wounds, being a human being is tough. Mm -hmm. Traumas are tough. People have gone through so much trauma. If we could snap our fingers and heal people's trauma, come together and help people, the perfect world supposedly this could happen that everyone's got food water a great job we have sped up artificial intelligence robotics so fast because all of us are instantly educated way more engineers way more cleaning up of the ocean like everything would be done in 20 years yeah and technology would be doing all the meaningless tasks that we don't want to do for work anymore and all human beings would get, would get to do is to live this free thinking, whatever they want to do every day with people they want to do, create things and entertain each other and live a happy life. In that version, people earned, earned that life. In some of the versions that are being shared In today's world, people want that given. Hmm. Hmm. And I understand why. Because to not be a, to to have free healthcare and free education and to not have to worry about food and like, why are people starving on the streets? I get why people are like, come on. We're this greatest country. Why is this happening? I get it. But having it all given. Yeah creates a different reality than if we can earn it and have it. It's the same thing probably I can only assume with raising kids. Yeah. If you give your kids all the money, all the opportunity, they're going to be a different person at 30 than the 30-year-old who's in the same position as they are who earned their way to there. Mm -hmm. It's night and day. Mm -hmm. And you think because you gave them everything that you're helping them. But what you did by accident is strip them of all the learning experiences and growing experiences of what it's like being afraid, having challenges, having to push through fear. It builds your character. And that's how it is as a country. But we as the people, 330 million of us, we don't need the government. We don't need a politician. We don't need a company to help us. Mm -hmm. If we could just mobilize as a group, we don't even need to get a bill passed we can solve every problem on our own. But people aren't but working people, together. That's the hardest thing of being a leader. Mm-hmm. There's even people who run companies that are paying people 100000 a year and can't get them on the same page. Yeah. 
that's the biggest thing is like, how do you get 330 million people on the same page? And we all go to different neighborhoods. We all volunteer our skills. We build centers. We do, we help people. We as a people could change the world, but we can't get together. And that's my one complaint about the legacy media and the government is that with the limited time that people have in their busy lives to turn on the TV for 15 minutes, it's to create panic, stress, and talking shit instead of 15 minutes that can add positivity and education to the population. Because they want the views They're and the They're all clicks. talking crap on yeah. each other of like, yeah. look how bad this person is. Look how bad this person is on both sides. Yeah. When why can't we turn on the TV for 15 minutes and instead of them talking crap, it's about how to cook a health, healthy meal or how to how to help save some money on taxes or how to start a business or but here's how to question. not be a bully. Here's my question is that they always say that with these big headlines, the negative ones where they're talking the mm -hmm. BS, that that is what gives them the viewership. So if tomorrow one of these news channels did how to make a healthy breakfast, are people going to watch that? No. No. So that's why they don't do it, which is sad. So how do you get over that hump? And start fr like even an anchor man. They made a joke about it about the happy news, and it was like all the puppies and stuff, yeah. and and people were like, well, this is amazing. And then cut to many many years later, the good news movement that um, the actor from The Office, what is his name? John Krasinski. Yes, that he started, and it really is just all stories and incredible, inspiring things happening around the world. So for an actor to start that, and it's really popular on Instagram, millions of views, but if he had a show, a prime or a daytime mm -hmm. show, a spot, would that be as popular? Yes. So because why? it's him, it's leadership. Yep. Unfortunately, I don't have a personal love and respect for everybody I see just because they're on TV. You have to make an impact in me, and that's how you become a leader. Yeah. So someone like John Krasinski, he makes me feel good and I believe in him. Mm -hmm. And if he had a good news show, I would watch it because of him. There's a disconnect right now where I don't feel like I don't look at people in the news and go, oh, these are leaders that I look up to and trust. No. So that's what you need. So the whole answer, answer your question, how is this all fixed? Is all the people need to come together and rally around some person who can try to do the impossible, which is bring the country together and get us all on the same page. Mm -hmm. But it's just almost an impossible task. So that is where it becomes disheartening. And you're just like, oh, that's so depressing. Like, how can we ever change the world? And it brings it back to, the, to the, that other story. I thought I could change the world, but if I just would have changed myself mm -hmm. i could have changed my neighborhood mm -hmm. i could have then changed my city i then could have changed my state i then could have changed the united states and then i could have changed the world if only i would have known if i started with myself so have these intellectual thoughts and debates and we're using politics as an example but this is in many different fields it's important to think to be a critical thinker to think to learn to have the debates to see to try to feel it out but at the end of the day, you can only change yourself. Mm -hmm. I would never sit here and bash other people. I don't agree on their ideas. I would just figure out a creative way to make my ideas and my plans more attractive so that people would just choose and go, you know what, Fred and Alyssa, that's a really good idea. I don't need to talk about the Eddie and Melissa show and go, you don't want to watch the Eddie and, and Melissa show. Eddie, they have a terrible relationship. Why would you ever watch the Eddie and Melissa show? They don't even love each other. They don't have a dog. I mean, they're not even dog people. And they sit there and they talk about all this stuff. Why would I spend my time talking about my competitor to my listeners rather than thinking of my listeners and you and I having an inspirational conversation where the listeners are choosing our show? Yeah because we're impacting their life. But so many people in the world want to talk about, oh, don't go with that realtor. 
don't don't go with that politician. Don't go with that business. My my protein's better. Their business is run funny. No, stop talking about your competitor. Talk about why your protein is so great. Talk about like people just need to stick on if you, even if you're in in these movements, if you're starting protests and stuff, don't talk about the negatives of other people. Start a movement that's so inspirational that people are lining up to join because it's for positive change. You're not tearing someone else down. Mm -hmm. You found a better way to lift people up. So until we can get a bunch of leaders to lift people up and not tear people down, and until we can focus on education and give everybody equal opportunity to the tools and then the mindset of being able to take care of themselves first, mm -hmm. that's when change can happen. But you until then, heard it here first, ladies and gents. Until then, what all I can do is work on myself, right. share my experiences, talk it into a microphone, put it out to the world, and maybe my words and my thoughts will relate with somebody. Yeah. And that's all I can do. And regardless of who agrees or disagrees, you take it in, you learn, you grow, you adjust. But all I can do is the best I can do today. The only thing I can control is what I spend the next 12 hours of today doing that I'm doing. I can't control who's going to be elected next. I can't control what's going to be on the news tonight. I can only control what I'm going to do with my next 12 hours of this day. 10 and hours. What are those 10 hours going to be filled with? Working out, eating healthy, editing, getting this episode up, and a million other things. But I can only control, and I can only control in the next 10 hours how I choose to feel. Yep. Regardless of what happens today, good, bad, or neutral, I can only control what these next 10 hours are going to be and how I react to them. Mm -hmm. So that sums all that up. I don't even know where we got to all this stuff. But anyway, we're going to head out. I haven't eaten yet. It's 2 o'clock. I haven't eaten either, and i got to go run and see how that the new house. build's doing. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, um, thank you all for checking out the pod today. Um, we'll be back next Wednesday. We will. And we appreciate you and... And just remember, you know, just you're in control. You create your own reality. You create your own life. And you choose your destiny. You're here. If you're listening to this, you're in a really good position to do whatever you want to do because you have access. You have time. You have access. And you can you can live your, your best life. Find good people to do it with, too. So we love you. We appreciate you so much. And uh, we will see you next week. 